Hello everyone, this is Dr. Juwan. I'm gonna answer an email that was sent a little while ago and the question was, we know what diabetes type one is. We understand what, what type two is. What's diabetes 1.5? Because believe it or not, this person had it without even knowing. If you're new to my channel, thank you for tuning in. Even if you haven't done so already, please hit the subscribe button down below. It'll take you two seconds. And the bell notification. Facebook watchers, thank you. I always appreciate growing an audience. Please hit the like button. And also, if you find this information valuable, please share with a friend. And if you have any comments or suggestions for future topics, please leave them down below in the comment section. I always appreciate a wider variety of topics to talk about. Thanks for watching. We understand what diabetes type 1 is. We understand what diabetes type 2 is, but what the heck is diabetes 1.5? Never heard of that one before? It's very unusual, yet it's very, very, it's more common than you think. Now, when it comes to diabetes 1.5, it's otherwise known as LADA. What's LADA? It's latent autoimmune diabetes in adults. Okay, basically this is, diabetes 1.5 is when you're an adult, now you're insulin dependent. How the heck did that happen? So let's rewind a little bit. So type one, type one diabetes is an autoimmune disease. What happens with an autoimmune disease? Your body does not know with your, if your organ systems are friend or foe. So what does it do? It attacks the tissue. Now an autoimmune disease, it's specified to the, what organ system it is. And your, for example, like your thyroid, you have an autoimmune disease that's directed to the thyroid gland that's called Hashimoto's. Now an autoimmune disease that direct, that's actually directed the target tissue of the pancreas, the beta cells specifically, because it's the beta cells that produce insulin, that your body's attacking those beta cells. So the beta cells which produce insulin, you're gonna find antibodies that attack those B cells, the beta cells, so then your body does not produce insulin. We need insulin to help lower our blood sugar, okay? And uh, it's usually at a younger age. You could be born with it or it's very, very, you know, you're, you're young and it's autoimmune, it's rapid onset and the treatment protocol for type one diabetes oftentimes is insulin. You have to inject insulin on a daily basis because why? You're not producing the insulin from those beta cells so you need an artificial source. So you, this, this is the, when you see people who have diabetes, type one, they're always injecting themselves after they test their, blue, their, their blood glucose level. The other type is type two. Now type two, this is gradual onset. What happens, you become insulin resistant. Now firstly, you become insulin resistant from doing what? Taking in too many carbohydrates, sugars, bread, stress, so forth and so on. So what happens, this is a receptor problem. So it's not the fact that your body's producing too little insulin, what happens is that the receptors are saturated and it's a receptor problem. So you become what? Insulin resistant. Now this is later on in, in your age, it is gradual onset. Oftentimes it's genetic, it could be environmental, it could be diet related. And the treatment protocol typically is medication, you're gonna take metformin. However, the good thing about type two diabetes, yes, it's, cure, it's treatable. How? Well, how'd you get in the first place? You ate too many carbohydrates, sugar, and you had a sedentary lifestyle, and stress. So this is type two diabetes. This is one of those conditions which you actually can be cured by modifying your lifestyle and diet and exercise. Now the problem is now we have this blend. So type one is autoimmune, type two is a receptor problem. So what's this 1.5? It's a double-edged sword. It's in the middle. What happens, it's a blend of both. One, it's autoimmune, and two, your cells are not taking in the insulin. So what happens, it's autoimmune, it happens later on in life, typically for people over the age of 30 and 40 will get its gradual onset. What's happening is that you have antibodies that are attacking those beta cells of the pancreas. Remember, it's the beta cells that produce the insulin. Your body is not making the insulin and it's not receiving the insulin. So it's a double-edged sword. What's the cause? It could be genetics and it's non-reversible. So this is one of those situations where once you have it like autoimmune, like type one, it's non-reversible. You cannot change it and cure it with diet. And the thing about type 
diabetes 1.5, it's unrelated to obesity. Typically type 2 diabetes, it's related to obesity and sugar. Type 1.5, it's oftentimes it's not related to obesity. What's happening is that when you're taking the blood, one of the, indicate, one of the markers, so when you're doing a blood labs and they're testing the A1C, remember the hemoglobin a, A1C, that's a measure of 90 days. What happens with 1.5, you have a higher A1C levels. It's abnormally higher than a type 2 diabetic. So this is red flag number one. Red flag number one is when you're taking, when you're taking a blood lab, yes, your glucose may be higher than normal, but it's the A1C. Remember, the A1C is a measure of 90 days. So then the, the curiosity is, here's the confusion. The confusion is it's, the symptoms are very similar to type 2 diabetes. Remember, it's later on in life. So those symptoms, you're having weight loss, you have excessive thirst, excessive urination, blurred vision, if it gets that far, you might have neuropathy, bilateral, in the hands and the feet. So what happens? How do you diagnose it? Well, you have to get, go to your primary doc, go to functional medicine doc, get a blood panel. Now, a blood panel should consist of the blood test, you're looking for antibodies against the beta cells. That's the, that's the goal. So the two blood cells that may, I'm sorry, the two blood labs that are, will help this out are one, the GAD65. The GAD65 test, that's the most common standardized test that we give to indicate, okay, something's wrong. Are you having antibodies against the beta cells of the GAD65? In addition, what I like doing, I like testing a full panel. Now, you want to do a full panel, you want to do the autoimmune, the autoimmune diabetes panel. That covers all tests. I'm a big believer in let's not do two visits, let's do one visit to knock it all out. Because if you do two visits, if your primary doc only does the GAD65 and that indicates one thing, you still have this lag period that, okay, we don't really know yet, so let's come back and in that time it's going to be at least 21 days. When you go to your primary doc or when I work with my patients, I always insist on getting Let's get the autoimmune diabetes panel because it covers all the tests, including the GAD65. Okay, so now if you have diabetes 1.5, I'm very sorry about it. And you have it, you have it, it's autoimmune. Now autoimmune diseases, they cannot be cured. However, 80% of the symptoms, no matter what it is, can be helped with diet. Okay, <clears throat> diet. Firstly, you want to do, clean up the diet, wheat, gluten, sugar, dairy, soy, and peanuts. That's an anti-inflammatory diet to begin with. Remember, autoimmune, your body's attacking its own self. You don't want any more opportunity. So what you want to do is that, remember, keep the thing in mind with type 1.5, the beta cells are, are dysfunctional. They're damaged. So you want foods high in phytonutrients. What are foods high in uh, phytonutrients? your vegetables. What are phytonutrients? These are nutrients that are high in antioxidant and, an, and anti-inflammatory benefits. Remember, you want to calm down the body now because now it's attacking itself. In addition, supplements. All these supplements are going to do a couple things. One, they make, they're going to make your body more insulin sensitive and decrease overall systemic inflammation due to the fact that now you have an autoimmune disease. So vitamin D3, vitamin D3 is phenomenal for everything, for your brain, for, the, for your immune system, for the organ system. And I always recommend, firstly, let's get your vitamin D levels checked. If you're typically low, you have low vitamin D levels, you want to get them up as high and fast as possible. So 20,000 IUs on a daily basis will help that. In addition, in addition zinc. 50 milligrams of zinc on a daily basis will help decrease systemic inflammation and also too, let's get your body into road to better health. In addition, B1. B1 thiamine is good. Bento, bentofamine is even better, okay? Even better, 200 milligrams twice a day. Benfotamine, sorry, I mispronounced it. Benfotamine is a better, more, absor a more quick absorbable vitamin B1, sorry about that. Nicotinamide, this is good for the energy cycle and you want to get the average dosage. In addition to N-acetylcysteine, NAC, glutathione, L-cysteine, either way, 
It's good for the liver pathway, decreased systemic inflammation, 1,200 milligrams a day on an empty stomach. In addition to Gymnena uh, Silvestri, that will help as an herb to make your bodies more insulin sensitive as well as chromium picolinate. Chromium picolinate, 500 micrograms, is phenomenal for, yes, it's typically for type 2 diabetes, but also too, it's good for your whole body because, again, you want your body to utilize anything that's in it with the insulin possible. And typically, the treatment protocol is you're going to be on insulin. You are going to be on insulin injections. Okay, so I hope this helps. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. If you have any suggestions for topics, please leave them down below and hope you enjoyed the video. Take care.